Fire rated assemblies are used by the codes to create compartments within a building or space. By separating the different areas of a building, sometimes both horizontally and vertically, the spread of a single fire and transfer of the heat generated by that fire can be limited. There are three basic types of rated assemblies, fire barriers, fire partitions, and horizontal assemblies. Fire barriers and fire partitions are vertical building elements such as walls and shaft enclosures that have a fire resistance rating. Horizontal assemblies are floor or ceiling or ceiling or roof assemblies that have a fire resistance rating. The codes determine when each type is required to provide the appropriate level of compartmentation within the building or space. Fire barriers are walls that have a fire resistant rating and in most cases must be continuous and extend vertically from the top of a floor assembly to the bottom of a floor or ceiling assembly. For example, a fire barrier would extend through a suspended ceiling to the slab above. When a fire barrier intersects another fire resistance rated assembly, either another wall or a horizontal assembly, in other words, a floor or a ceiling assembly, additional fire blocking is required at the joint. In addition, the number of openings in a fire barrier, including doors and windows, is limited. The doors, windows, and other penetrations in the rated assemblies must be rated as well. Floor or ceiling, or ceiling or roof assemblies that are required by the codes to be rated are referred to as horizontal assemblies. They serve the same function as fire barriers, but are horizontal instead of vertical building elements. In most cases, horizontal assemblies must meet requirements similar to those of fire barriers. Horizontal assemblies extend horizontally from one rated wall or exterior wall to another. Where fire barriers and horizontal assemblies meet, the joints must be sealed. Openings and penetrations are limited and must be protected as well. In most cases, when the codes require the separation of a specific area, both fire barriers and horizontal assemblies are required. When the walls, floors, and ceiling assemblies surrounding an area have the same fire resistance rating, it creates a complete compartmentation or enclosure, both vertically and horizontally, like a four-sided box with a top and bottom. An example would be the enclosure of an exit stairway, where all four walls, the floor, and the ceiling or roof have a two-hour rating. Depending on the codes, Fire barriers and horizontal assemblies are tested using ASTM E119, Standard Test Methods for Fire Tests of Building Construction and Materials, NFPA 251, Standard Methods of Tests of Fire Resistance of Building Construction and Materials, or UL 263, Standard for Fire Tests of Building Construction and Materials, depending on the code. They may also be required to pass NFPA 221, Standard for High Challenge Firewalls, Firewalls, and Fire Barrier Walls. Keep in mind that an assembly may need to meet more than one code requirement. This is especially true for structural components, such as floor or ceiling assembly, that must also meet construction type requirements. For example, if a space or room requires a one-hour rated floor horizontal assembly, but the construction type requires the floor assembly to be rated two hours for that construction type, the floor assembly must provide the two-hour rating. The highest required rating must be provided. If a horizontal separation is required and the existing floor or ceiling assembly does not provide an adequate fire resistance rating, then a rated ceiling assembly may need to be installed below the existing ceiling structure. Fire partitions are similar to fire barriers, but in most cases have less restrictive requirements. In the IBC, the term fire partition is used in addition to fire barrier to mean a vertical rated partition that separates certain uses within a building. This term is not used by the NFPA. Fire partitions are most often used to separate exit access corridors, tenant spaces in malls, dwelling and or sleeping units, and elevator lobbies from the rest of the floor. 
However, according to the IBC, fire partitions do not provide the same level of protection as fire barriers. For example, although fire partitions can extend from structure to structure in a building, they are also allowed to stop at a rated ceiling system. Fire barriers cannot. This difference is shown here. A fire partition separates one area from another but is not always required to be a full enclosure. In other words, the floor and ceiling assemblies typically have to have the same rating, but when used to separate tenant spaces in malls, dwelling units, sleeping areas and corridors or certain construction types, they do not. A fire partition usually has a rating of at least one hour. In certain situations, corridor walls and walls between dwelling and sleeping units are allowed to have a lower rating. Often an automatic sprinkler system is required for the lower rating. Yet, like a fire barrier, openings in a fire partition are required to be protected, although the number of openings is not limited. The NFPA codes do not differentiate between fire barriers and fire partitions. However, by allowing exceptions to the requirements for fire barriers, in cases where the IBC calls for the use of fire partitions, and by adding requirements where a higher level of separation is necessary, the fire rating requirements of the codes are similar. The codes now require that fire walls, fire barriers and partitions, and smoke barriers and partitions be marked in the field. The marking must indicate the type of use, for example, fire barrier or fire partition, and the hourly rating it provides. This mark can be above the finished ceiling, but it must be accessible. The information has to be repeated at approximately 30-foot intervals along the length of the wall and be of a legible size lettering. This is not required in certain residential uses with drywall ceilings. However, this is very useful when working on a project in an existing building, since it is a quick way to determine the location of existing rated walls. It is very common for a rated wall to be added or modified during an interior project. Whether the project includes a new layout, new finishes, or the addition of wiring and cabling, work done may affect a rated wall. Therefore, determine the correct use and rating of the fire barrier, horizontal assembly or fire partition if adding a new one or make any changes to an existing one. Also keep in mind that for all three, the presence of an automatic sprinkler system may allow for lower fire resistance ratings. Therefore, the rating depends on the purpose of the fire barrier, horizontal assembly or fire partition, the occupancy classification, and if the space or building has sprinklers. The sprinkler system must meet the current code requirements.